Welcome to the uh, American Legion's Veterans Day celebration. We're going to start things off with the Scouts advancing the colors. Detail, attend, hut, and hand, salute. Everybody join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And two. Well, you may be seated. Good morning. My name is Michael Whalen. I'm the adjutant of our local American Legion Post 202. We're going to begin this morning by first counting our blessings. Sometimes we forget to appreciate the good things God has bestowed, and we let our difficulties consume us. As we take time to honor our veterans today, and we focus on the sacrifices they made on our behalf, let us all find peace and gratification in our own lives. We ask that God to help us pay homage to those veterans who seek only acceptance. And let this day be a respite for all. Amen. Amen. In Flanders Field is a war poem written during the First World War by Canadian physician Lieutenant Colonel John McRae. His references to poppies that grew over the graves gave rise to the current tradition of distribution and fundraising efforts of various veterans groups in today's culture. Veterans of a certain age can fondly remember having to recite this poem while in grammar school. Hopkinton schools were no exception. His old friend Johnny Cahill would often tell me he remembered this well. At this time, please welcome Hopkinton High School junior Kiki Fassbender back for the second year in a row to continue this long standing Hopkinton tradition that she recites in Flanders Field. In Flanders Fields, the poppies glow, between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place within the sky, larks still bravely singing fly, scarce herds in the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunsets glow. We loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from falling hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with those who die. We shall not sleep as poppies grow in Flanders fields. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kiki. Scouts BSA is the largest and most prominent value-based youth development organization in the United States. Their stated mission is to prepare young people to make the correct ethical and moral choices over a lifetime. There has always been a connection between military veterans and the Scouts, and Hopkinton is a great example of this. As we assemble here today, please take note of the cleanup and extensive pruning the Scouts accomplished around the gazebo and the War Memorial Monument. I will now ask 
the leader of that particular venture, Ryan Brennan, to come up and say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Whalen. Hello to our special guests, our community members, and our veterans. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to gather here today to celebrate and honor our veterans. My name is Ryan Brennan. I am a sophomore at Hopkinton High School, and I am honored to be here with you today. As a Boy Scout, I learned at an early age how important it was to provide service to others in our community. Some of the events that I have enjoyed most over the years include serving at the veterans' dinner, being involved in flag ceremonies, and participating in our Memorial Day and Veteran Day events. Seeing our community come together to celebrate our veterans, and it makes me feel proud of my country, and I realize how important it is for us all to actively participate in these activities so we do not forget. As Mr. Whalen mentioned, I recently completed the work portion of my Eagle Scout project. I learned that there was a need that would not only benefit our veterans, but also our community. I wanted to clean the Veterans Memorial, which is located behind me and to my left, and beautify the area surrounding the town common so that people could more easily read and remember those who served in the wars which for which me commemorates the memorial. The far left panel on the memorial remembers those who served in the conflicts in Afghanistan, Lebanon, Panama, Kosovo, and Haiti. The large middle panel remembers those who served in Vietnam, World War II, and the Korean conflict. The right panel remembers those who served in the Persian Gulf, Grenada, Bosnia, Somalia, and Iraq. I hope you can enjoy a moment today or on your next walk and remember those who served in these wars. In addition, I learned the gazebo could use some freshening up and the bushes needed some significant trimming so that we could again see the plaque down to my left under, some, under the rhododendron bushes which was placed there in memory of the sons and daughters of Hopkinton who made the supreme sacrifice of life and who served in wars or conflicts for the preservation of our free nation. I am incredibly grateful to be part of the celebration to honor America veterans and thank you for your patriotism, your love of country, and your, and your willingness to serve and sacrifice for the common good. I would like to end with a simple reminder that is engraved on the granite memorial behind us that reminds us that our strength is in peace. Thank you to all of our veterans. Thank you, Ryan. This, at this time, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, our state representative, Carolyn Dykma, has uh, recorded a message to be shown on HCAM. Good morning. I'm State Representative Carolyn Dykema, and it's my privilege and pleasure to be here with the community of Hopkinton this morning. And I want to thank Mike Whalen, the veterans of Hopkinton, and HCAM TV for allowing me to be here virtually with you today to honor Veterans Day. Veterans Day is a national holiday set aside to honor the men and women who have proudly served our country since our independence. I want to thank and honor each one of those veterans, particularly those who have given their lives in service. Today, we all benefit from their sacrifice, and we're very grateful to live in a country that grants us so many rights and freedoms. Every one of our veterans has served under our American flag. Our flag is a symbol that brings forth strong emotion for many of us. Yet its meaning isn't intrinsic to its fabric or its design. Its significance is given by our citizenry, those who have fought under it and those who cherish it. It is the values of the American people themselves that are captured by that flag, which is instantly recognized around the world and which has always united us in common purpose. It is a symbol for which many have died, 
and its colors are flying proudly over our heads today. The flag has come to represent great contrasts. It represents both rugged individualism as well as the strength of community. It represents tremendous power as well as great compassion. It represents the duty to speak up and speak out as well as the responsibility to come together as a community. It may be the very depth of these values that have led many to admire us and some to come to us in their time of need. I'll never forget the pride that I experienced as an American when I was approached by a French citizen on the street. He was so grateful to us and our country from saving their country from fascism during World War II. We as Americans are not perfect and we have our disagreements. We share them freely and openly, a gift from our veterans and from our flag. But we must always temper these freedoms with a strong respect for each other and a recognition that our prosperity and indeed our very safety and security is dependent on one another. Any combat veteran can tell you that having each other's back and having trust in your fellow Americans can literally mean the difference between victory and defeat. As we celebrate and honor our veterans and our servicemen and women on Veterans Day today, at this challenging time in our nation's history, I hope we will all call to mind our flag. We are one nation with a shared path we need to forge together. Our children are watching. Let us make sure to embody and model the values of a country that will always make them proud. A country that stands for respect, equality, and justice for all. Thank you so much for the chance to join you here today at this unique and historic time. May God bless these United States of America and all of those who have served under her flag. I wish you and your family a safe, and healthy Veterans Day. In today's world, it is certainly rare to find someone who has worked for the same organization for 27 years and yet continues to be motivated and fully engaged in his chosen profession. Joseph Bennett is such a man. He joined the Hopkins Police Department in 1993 and now in 2020, he is our newest police chief. Over the years, he has served in every capacity at the department, earned his master's degree in criminal justice from the Western New England University. He has also demonstrated a respect for veterans, which is why we asked him to share his thoughts this morning as we celebrate Veterans Day. Town of Hopkinton, Please welcome Chief Joseph Bennett. Hello, everybody. What a great day, huh? It's fantastic weather we have. You know, last month when Mike asked me to speak today, I was truly humbled. I was truly honored. But I asked myself, why me? I never served in the military. But I knew one thing, and that is I knew I would be here today. As I started thinking about what I might say today, the thing that kept coming to mind was, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your dedication. And thank you for your commitment to our great nation. Since I was a small child, I've always been impressed that someone was willing to leave their home, leave their community, their friends, their family, in order to serve our great nation. The courage that it takes is enormous. Uh, yesterday, I was attending a virtual summit and Robert O'Neill, who retired from SEAL Team 6 and is professed to have killed Osama bin Laden, was speaking. He said something that truly moved me as a father, something I could relate to. O'Neill said, the hardest part of going to combat is kissing your kids goodbye. That was something that I could relate to. As I thought more about how each and every one of you left your loved ones and took the chance that that kiss, that goodbye, was the last they would ever get and the last you would ever give. And for far too many, 
sadly it was. As a father and a grandfather, I thought about all of your family who felt that feeling, that they may be saying goodbye to you forever. On a more positive note, I look around and I see all the symbols that you all proudly wear, all the hats, pins, and shirts, and uniforms. You're all part of something that spans over 300 years in this country and dates back to the first time anyone fought to protect their way of life. You share a common bond and esprit de corps. You're part of something grand, something truly amazing. Please always wear those symbols with pride as we as a nation are proud of you, proud of your service, and extremely grateful. I heard a quote that speaks to what you signed up to do for our country. It has been associated with Winston Churchill, George Orwell, and others, but I was unable to truly confirm its origin, but it resonates with me. So I wanted to share it. I've taken the liberty of substituting men for, men for people so as to not leave any of our service people, or people out. And it goes something like this. We sleep soundly in our beds because of rough people who stand ready in the night to visit violence upon those who would do us harm. That's who our great service people are, and that's who you are. I was extremely nervous about today. I was nervous that my words would not clearly express my gratitude or the nation's gratitude for your service that I would not adequately recognize the sacrifice that so many of you have given, and some even, and many even the ultimate sacrifice. I want to thank you, Mike, for inviting me today. Thank you all for serving our great nation. May God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America. I have a confession to make. I selfishly said a little prayer asking God for some nice weather here on Veterans Day because we were forced to schedule this service at an outside venue. I was somewhat concerned about the conditions that we might expect the first week of November. Obviously, we have gotten a whole week of great weather in response, so I am very grateful. Yes, today serves as a reminder to be thankful. And we need this occasion because it is only natural during our busy lives to be more focused on our daily routines than the world we live in. As the existence of our good fortune is not often questioned or contemplated. More specifically, Today is a reminder of our, of our obligation to veterans, our obligation to fulfill promises made by our forefathers, promises to honor and take care of our veterans, and if needed, their surviving families. For so many generations, military veterans have been an important part of the Hopkinton community, whether by design or circumstance, they have served and contributed not only as outspoken leaders, but also as quiet, compassionate, hardworking men and women passing on their traditional American values. Those of you here this morning who are not veterans, maybe you are a family member or a friend, you should know that veterans value your respect. And also, there is no greater reward in life to hear the words, I'm so proud of you, from your children. To my fellow veterans, I'm sure that you will agree that when we look back at all the choices we have made during our lifetime, the good, the bad, and that what was I thinking, our decision to serve our country was the best. When we see an older veteran, maybe a World War II soldier, 
wearing his uniform at an event. It does invoke a few thoughts. On the light side, we wonder in amazement how he still fits into the uniform. But seriously, imagine all the pride, memories, and the patriotic feelings that he hopes the next generation will recognize and continue. Likewise, what we do here today, hopefully, will become an important memory for all those who follow. God bless America, Semper Fi. At this time, I'm going to go through the list of the veterans with Hopkins Connection that we have lost since our last Veterans Day service. First one on the list is Charlie Lowell, United States Army, passed away at 76 years old. Charlie was a paratrooper with the 82nd Airborne. In his civilian life, Charlie was a human union arbitrator. He owned and operated the general store in Holliston, was a Babe Ruth baseball coach, and in his later years, he was a ranger at Juniper Hill Country Club. Robert Petraka, 82, U.S. Army. Hopkins in High School grad, 1953. Became a forest ranger in Maine and North and South Carolina. And was an American Legion member of Post 126 in South Carolina. George Brown, 85, U.S. Army. George was a mechanic instructor at Keefe Tech, survived by his wife Mary, son Robert, and granddaughter Denise. David Adelman, 78 years, U.S. Army, Korean War vet, Dave worked at the Prime Computer, where he met his wife, Karen, and had four children. Franny Pine, 80 years old, U.S. Army. He worked at Eversource as a truck driver in the maintenance department. He survived by his wife, Phyllis, his son, Kevin, two grandchildren, Franny now joins his late son, Michael. George Gross, 86, United States Army. He served in Japan during the Korean War. George was a long time volunteer fireman, survived by three children and eight grandchildren. Paul Nordstrom, 89 years old. U.S. Air Force, carpenter, builder, teacher, past post commander of the Woodville American Legion Post, survived by three children and seven grandchildren. Michael Zalembo, 98, U.S. Navy, World War II, served aboard USS Starling in the Pacific. Michael worked in the construction field, leaves two daughters, a grandson, and a great-grandson. Ray Mahoney, 86, longtime post-202 member, lived for many years down on West Main Street. Jack Arorian, 75, U.S. Navy. Longtime Post 202 member. Jack was an aviation enthusiast, photographer, house painter, musician, and biologist. Survived by his daughter, Kate. James Sullivan, 77, U.S. Army. Hopkins High School, 1960 grad. Worked as a truck driver survived by his wife, Gerda. Roy Stratton, 95, 
longtime American Legion member, past commander of the Woodville Post. Roy worked at Fenwall for many, many years, leaves three children and two grandchildren. Bill Palmer, 72, United States Navy, served during Vietnam, later worked at Western Nurseries as a bus driver, survived by three brothers. He was a member of the VFW. Ned Ledger, 93, U.S. Coast Guard, worked on transport ships during World War II and later went to work at the Charles River Hospital. Robert Sandwald, 94, U.S. Army, worked on B-24s during World War II, later worked in Polaroid, leaves three daughters, six grandchildren and five great-grandchildren. Billy Haywood, 78, 1959 grad of Hopkins in High School, worked as a heavy equipment auto operator at Rosenfeld and later for McIntyre Loam. Arthur Lane, 93, U.S. Navy served aboard ship in World War II, later worked for the MBTA, survived by his wife Anne, five children, six grandchildren, four great-grandchildren. Gary Millison, 94, served in the Royal Netherlands East Indies Air Force, loved woodworking, Survived by two daughters, five grandchildren, great grandchildren. Jack, 75, did not live in Hopkinton, but many of you might remember him as a veteran service officer serving the town of Hopkinton. Thomas Ellum, 72, U.S. Army. Served in Vietnam as an intelligence analyst, longtime active member of our post. Leaves his wife Susan, three children, and two grandchildren. Joseph Donovan, 84, U.S. Army. Held many positions in the fire service industry and spent some time here working at the Hopkins Fire Department as a volunteer. Fred Dickmark, 91, Korean War vet, restaurant owner and businessman, survived by his son Dennis. Daniel Laughlin, 90 years old, United States Marine Corps, Korean War veteran, Worked here at Southworth Industries in Hopkinton. Lived for many years down on Pike Street. Survived by seven children and eight grandchildren. And Robert Wright, 86, USMC. Many family members still here in town. He spent most of his life down in North Carolina. Survived by one daughter two grandchildren, four great-grandchildren. This time, to honor these men, we'll have a rifle salute, followed by the playing of taps. Present off. Present off. We now call it for a fallen hero. Ready, aim, fire! Aim. Fire. Aim. Fire. 